<coughs> Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? Big Porky here, still the voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, let's have a look, let's never get this right first time. That should do it. I've got a gentleman uh, called Bernard Smurf or something from America ringing me in a minute. Just in bed watching a film and I forgot that you were going to ring me. Well, I've watched one film, Queen and Slim it's called. It's not on that pictures till till it come out yesterday, didn't it? But. I watched that and I'm watching Disturbing the Peace now. That looks a good film. Looks like that kid out Neighbours, you know, Mike, Guy Pierce. Looks a good film, that. Right? What do you reckon, Rockinator? Are we going to speak to this American geezer? Hey? What do you reckon? Hey? We kiss. We kiss. Love you, Daddy. We kiss. Watch this now. Tesco Joe's here. Tesco Joe! Oh, Rocky, run for it! It's Tesco Joe! Tesco's here! <laughs> he gets under the bed when I tell him Tesco's here, don't you, Rock? I'm just in my uh, dressing gown. My new one, what do you reckon? I think it suits me. I think it suits old Porky, this dressing gown. Aye. Well. This should be ringing any second, unless he's jogged me on. I don't really know what to talk about. I think I've done one of, the, one of these before with an American guy. World Breaker Fighting, is it? Adonis is called. He's a good bo good boxing bloke. I think I've done one with Ingram. A couple of ones with Ingram. It's just if you get a good reception, I suppose, isn't it? That film I've just watched, Queen and Slim. All right, right upsetting ending though. This bloke told police where they were going for a plane to leave run on runway because they were trying to get to Cuba, and uh, he got two hundred and fifty grand for each of them. So bad that black person doing that to other black people. But all the way through the film, all black people were sticking up for them, even police, because they got. You have to watch it. It's called Queen and Slim. It's the best film I've seen for a long time. Really good film that I've seen. Best film I've really seen for a long time, yeah. I think I might even get a picture off the internet and put it on this video for the thumbnail. But yeah. Cool, mate. Maybe it might take longer to get through, you know, it being from America. So maybe he's jogged me on. What do you reckon, Rocky? Rocky, we reckon we've been jogged on. No, no, it's not good, is it? Not good at all. What time is it? Time's knocking on. Well, it's been an interesting few days, haven't we, boxing? Uh, have a look. Oh, he's, I've jotted a few things down, I like to like, memorise a few things. Uh, but you know, it's easy. It's easy, to, it's easy to get called a hater, isn't it? You know, in boxing. Hello, how are you doing, mate? How you doing, mate? How are you? I'm alright. Where do you uh, where do you call it for calling from America? No, Dublin Island. Dublin Island, oh, it says uh, 
Bert, Bernard Smurf USA on that website. I don't know where the USA come from. Bernie was a, like a nickname and uh, Smurfy was <laughs> uh, one of my friends' names. I just put them together. I've just told my mate, I said, oh, no, mate, I'll see you later. I've got a bloke ringing from America. He's from Dublin. <laughs> Italian, you know, but the oh. American, I don't know. Oh, wait, it must just be, must, must be a, uh, just a rumour then. So how are you anyway, Bernard? Are you all right? I'm good, thanks. And yourself? I'm all right, mate. Yeah, I'm all right. I've got the camera rolling, so what would you like to talk about? Well, there's many things. Um, I'm sure you have stuff you want to talk about too. <laughs> I could talk I about anything. Say, yeah. before we get uh, begin, don't mind the hate you know I watch that video you shouldn't have to put up with that because we might agree and we might disagree on stuff mm. but that doesn't mean we have to fall out or whatever because no. you know respect everybody and their opinion yeah well you know I've come to the conclusion now that yeah I, I, sometimes I do push knuckle close but I've got an opinion I don't know I ain't going to be intimidated by anybody the worst thing they, the worst thing they can do is knock you out in it and I've had that done to me before I've had horribler things done to me than that, so if I can go through that, what's a confrontation? I'm not really bothered. You know what I mean? I, 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 I go, I bang in heads with Dennis every day, so you what, mate? There's no point having something on your mind if you're not going to speak it. So that's it. Speak no. your mind. I agree. With it. You know, I, you know, I, I'm banging heads with Dennis every week about stuff with boxing and. You know, I, I, I'm. You know, I can, you can fall out with people and that, and then next day you're all right. That's how I look at it. You know, I've had a couple of fallouts with people that I work with at the moment, but you know, everybody, everybody, it's boxing runs on emotion, doesn't it? That's what I think. I think. Well, it's positivity and negativity, so better to choose the positivity over the negativity, no matter what the situation. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, mate, you're right. But I, I don't think that boxing at the moment is booming like they're saying. The money's heading in one direction. Well, I agree with that because, you know, I wish I was born back in the generation of the old boxing because the best fought the best. But today it doesn't really seem like that because even look at Joshua, etc. You know, he fought, um, what was that Scottish man's name? Gary Cornish. Yeah, you know, who is this guy, you know? That's not the best fight and the best. And even look at the bookie prices, 1 to 20, etc. And 1 to 50, it's like, that's not the best versus the best. That's not... Uh, what, what did he fight Gary Cornish for, Commonwealth? Well, it wasn't just that fight that paid me off. There was a lot of other opponents. Um, and another thing that pays me off is this. They give credit to Joshua because he knocked Klitschko out. But they're not giving the credit to Fury, who will box him and won every round up. I don't think Fury won every round, did he? He was clear after eight rounds, wasn't he? And he uh, I, think I think he took his foot off. I can agree with you on that he didn't win every round, was probably the 12th round. Vladimir had worked him out, I think, after the ninth, and I'm not the only person who thinks that. I think Vladimir... Yeah, I respect that, but mm. um, for me, he didn't just outbox Klitschko, who was undefeated for 10 years. He came back, and I know we disagree on yeah, this yeah. one, but I respect your opinion, but yeah. he didn't just be he came back out with three years out of the ring on drugs etc and he outboxed Deontay Wilder um, for me there's 26 minutes in a fight now if you watch that fight he pretty much won every round except for the two times he got knocked down um, them two times um, was what 10 seconds you know um, even one of the knockdowns in the 12th round yeah he got knocked down but he came back and won the rest of the round well that's open for debate about the how long you were down in it say oh Deontay won but you can't hate Fury because the no. referee didn't do his job properly let me know? just correct you on something there you said Tyson were out the ring three year he wasn't out the ring three year I've got a photo on my wall here of me and Tyson right and it was and I was there with David Allen and Robin Reed and it was October 2016 and Tyson was sparring then Right, October 2016, so he wasn't exactly out of the ring partying, was he, if he's sparring October 16, because he started fighting, didn't he, in 17, didn't he, or end of 17, or something, something like that, wasn't it? 
Yeah. You mean out? You do you mean out the ring? Probably there was a drinking problem, which a body shot would mess you up. Tyson Fury, as I said, with the drugs, um, you know, and you looked at the shape of him, etc. As where his opponents were always active, always in shape, and uh, he had to come and lose so many stone, and you know. Yeah, but whose fault is that? Well, I think Tyson is the GOAT because um, not just um, he battled his own mental health and he helped others with mental health. I'm surprised that BBC, the, the Sports Personality of the Year, he didn't even get a mention of that. I'm not, I'm not buying any of that mental health thing, I'm sorry. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm not buying it. No. I'm not being smart, but I think unless we're in the shoes, we don't really understand that we can't really talk about it because you have to wear the person's shoes. It's all well to go to look from the outside, but unless you're on the inside. Well, I, everybody has their opinion, don't they? I don't believe it, so that's just me, in it? But you can mm, believe I it. That. So, do you believe you give seven million to charity? Yeah, why not? You know, um, because he would have had millions before that, and he was going to get millions after that. So, yeah, sure, why not? And he's a man of God, and God would want him to do stuff like that. So, yeah. You you believe he gave seven million to charity? Well, didn't. Well, um, I don't know. I like to see proof. <clears throat> I like to see proof when I hear things like that. That's what I like to see. I like to see a bit of proof. That's it. We all can say this and that, but unless there's proof, you know, it's not a fact unless there's proof. Well, I know Elton John gives money to charity, and, and there's I, there's always proof. I mean, that Channel Four TV program run by Joe Casey. They wanted to do a documentary about what what was happening with the money that Tyson give they cut him dead they don't want to deal with him they said they don't need to speak about the donations so we, we well. could also talk about the racism to Tyson Fury that when he beat Klitschko within what 24 hours they stripped him but Dillian White is waiting two three years for a mandatory Dillian White's had the opportunity to have his mandatory anti Tyson had his man. Dillian White jumps in at the deep end because he fought Joshua straight away and that's what it is. You have to respect him. He fought Derek twice and yeah, Derek has what, five, six losses but yeah. you have to respect Derek because Derek is one of them guys. Look, he's fighting music next so, you know, it's not like Derek is a bum. Yeah, he has a couple of losses but for me, I think, uh, you know, Dillian has fought the best for me. Like even Joseph Parker as well, I'd like to throw in. <laughs> yeah, you must be winding me up, mate, are you? You're on a wind-up, aren't you? <laughs> Who's Dillian White beat? Who's his best win? Well, you know, look at Anthony Joshua, you know, that's, I know he lost, but that's one opponent. Another is, um, as I said, he beat uh, Joseph Parker. He beat Derek twice. You know, yeah, I agree that these last fight wasn't that good. Your man, whack, I'm not very impressed with that. And that's what I said from the start, you know. You're at the world level already, so why are you fighting whack? You should fight someone a little higher or a little better than that. Right, let me just throw a few statistics at you. Let's back up a little bit. How many fighters has Tyson Fury beat in the Ring Magazine Top 10? No, look, as I said, I agree with that. But no, how many has he beat? <laughs> See there, Rocky. Be quiet. Two Rocket. Two out. One out. How many uh, fighters has Tyson Fury beat in the top ten ring magazine belt? And you're on the rank rankings. Well, you know he's beat Deontay. I'm sure he's there. He's beat Klitschko when he was there. Um, one or two others. Uh, oh, what well, well, others? You know, four or five, I'd say, or thereabouts. Oh, well, name them then. Deontay was one and two. Um, Deontay with a draw, uh, wasn't it? Der Derek was world level, wasn't he? No, Derek wants him in the magazine top ten. What? Derek Chisora, come on. No, no, I'm saying at world level, though. They were ranked in Ring Magazine. They were ranked in WBO, but we're talking top guys in Ring Magazine rankings because Tyson likes to go on about this Laniel status, doesn't he? So, how many guys has he beat in the Ring Magazine okay. top 10? Okay, if he does like to go on about the lineal, the thing 
because this, um, all Joshua, etc., etc., these people wouldn't have the belts if it wasn't for Tyson. Yeah, that's true, but whose fault was it that he lost the belts? I'm not sure about that. I, I think it was his mental health that um, he wasn't in love with boxing, he was just depressed, and uh, that's why he didn't fight Klitschko for the rematch, but I could be wrong. Do you think it might have been because of the Nandrolone thing hanging over him and it drove him to cocaine? Well, I said that to Peter Fury before, was it because of the cocaine? And Peter said, no, it wasn't because of the cocaine to me. Oh, well. So, it was only, yeah, uh, so answer that question. Years ago, I got um, strikes on myself. Right, answer that question then, so... Tyson's got one win over a Ring Magazine top ten. He's got one elite win, yeah? We agree on that, don't we? Okay, yeah. Right, so, one win. How many has Joshua got? <laughs> Out of the Ring Magazine top ten. Can, can I answer the question with a question? Yeah, go on, yeah, go on, yeah. Thank you. If Joshua and Fury fought, how would you see that fight playing out? I'd see Tyson taking him to school. You know, because, yeah, um, I think that Joshua, you know, is more, um, how I say, credited than Tyson. But I, I would agree with you that Tyson would take him to school. They'd take him to school, that's why they want to go to Saudi and get as much money as they can. Because Tyson yeah, will take him Tyson to school. Tyson said he's all about making history. Um, I leave for him Crow Park, so would Tyson not want to fight in Crow Park, you know, I'd take you to the card as well. Listen, do you believe a lot of what Tyson Fury says? Because I don't. I don't believe any of it, mate. I think it's all done for effect. Well, I take a man on his word, you know, whether he's right or wrong. Um, well, he'll fight in Ireland then, won't he? If uh, for, for for world title, but I don't think he will. He's going to go where money is. And, and why not? Because you've got to look at it like this. He would treat like a dog when he won them belts in Germany. They treat him like a dog. So why should he care? Well, if we're going to say we're going where the money is, well, then we have to respect, respect sorry, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, and Deji, if that's his name. We have to respect these because they're bringing the money in. You look at their pay per view, boys. They've not put the time in, though, have they, like other boxers? No, I respect that. Absolutely. They're not as good as the other boxers in each and every aspect. But. Um, as we said, we're going to go where the money goes and they bring the money. Sure, it's not just about the pay-per-view bringing the money. They even have um, Shannon Briggs, um, Sugar Shane, you know, involved in it. Shannon Briggs? What, what do you mean? Oh, uh, and Sugar Shane involved, like training yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. Shane Mosley. Sugar Shane Mosley, yeah. Oh, and Briggs, are they training them, guys? I mean, this is how I look at it, right? This is what Eddie Hearns brought us. He's brought us PEDs, right? That's what they've got. It's it's a mess boxing. He, he's trying to cover stuff up with PEDs. He's brought us stub up. He's put pay-per-view up a tenner. He's putting fights on in countries like Saudi where they chop people up and throw people off buildings. He's bringing all that and then he's putting fights on with YouTubers. What about all these kids who are professional fighters in England who are like 5 and 0, 6 and 0, or, or 2 and 0, who've come through an amateur system and then they're turning pro? How do you think them kids feel seeing these YouTubers getting 8 and 9 million? I mean, how messed up no, is that? No, I agree with you. Sure, look, Clarissa Shields, Katie Taylor, etc. Um, look at the women. They're so there's not that many women, uh, I was watching your video, that you yeah. were saying, oh, they can't even have an um, eliminator. So mm. I think I agree with you that they should bring more youth in, whether it's men or women. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right there, but... I, I, look, I'm not a big fan of women's boxing. I know, I know a woman boxer called Savannah Marshall and she hits like a man, but I'm not a massive fan of it because there aren't enough women in the division... But it's politically correctness now, and it's so everybody has to say it's great. But let me tell you this: you know all these promoters, managers, and all that. Majority of them, right? They're not going to say it, but they don't want women boxing. But they've got to go with flow, aren't they? They're going to get a few quid off it, and they're going to get slots on telly and get in, and get in with TV companies. So it, you've got to go with flow. But I don't like to see it. I don't like to see it at all. And like as I said in that video yesterday, 
there's two people in Great Britain in Shannon Courtney's weight division so she could fight for a British title now couldn't she but you have to have an eliminated to go for it so so the British title is never going to happen until there's some more people in the weight division is it What you, what do you mean the youth? You mean kids turning over? Yeah, like you know, um, at whatever age, you know, eighteen, seventeen, or whatever. Like. Well, you can, you can turn pro at eighteen, but you know the English Institute of Sport on Coleridge Road in Attercliffe, Sheffield. Now that the main man up there is Robert McCracken. Now he trains Joshua, and anybody who's any good up there, they're going to go to match him, aren't they? Because Eddie's he's going to recommend them to Eddie, because he don't want to work with Warren, does he, McCracken? So, that, that I don't agree with that, but the people, the good fighters that are turning over are going to go to match them, aren't they? You see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I agree with you. They should be working together, because why aren't they working together? Because, as I said, the uh, two options were positivity and negativity. So they're choosing the negative aspect, which is hoarding the fans, because we're not getting the fights we want to see because they're not working together. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, that. That's a good point, that Bernard. Very good point. Uh, I'd like to touch on the keep on the fury situation. Just yeah. for one or two more things, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, go um, on. So, for me, I just want your opinion um, on Tyson because he, he was, you know, kind of, let's say, nothing. And then he comes to the undisputed, and now he's lineal. Um, he brought on yeah, his own Lou. He's been on WWE, and now he's looking for MMA. Your thoughts on that? Uh, well, it's all to get money, isn't it? He's you getting know, I think I respect him because he's doing all of that, and you know, not just all of that, but I actually forgot he's done a song with Robbie Williams as well. Yeah, he's getting a few quid, he's making most of his profile while he can because people That's... could turn on you, can't they? In, in spotlight, he could say something one day, or something could happen, and then that's it, it's all over, isn't it? Again, and you've got to That's rebuild. Right the charity because look at the amount of money he has getting money from boxing money from singing money from MMA money from the loop and uh, money from the WWE well well if he's giving money to charity but millions of pounds to charity that's brilliant but I just don't believe it so that's just it that's my opinion but if you believe it and he says he's done it I think that's great I think that's brilliant <laughs> But why aren't they giving him awards and all this for it? Why would you give it to a charity in America if you're from England? He's from Manchester. Why would you give millions to a, a homeless charity in Los Angeles? Why wouldn't you do it for Withenshaw, where he's from? Or some of the poor areas in Manchester? You'd do it where you're from. You could put them millions into boxing clubs. What I personally think is he said something off the cuff and and it and it just took on a life of itself, and then eventually just nipped it in bun and refused to answer questions on it. That's what I personally think happened, and I think deep down you know that, don't you? But you're a Tyson fan, aren't you? I am a big Tyson fan. You know, I love to go with all my heart, body, and soul. You know, yeah. um, obviously some people don't, some yeah. people do, whatever. But you know, we all have different thoughts and opinions. We just have to respect each other. He's a masterful boxer. Masterful. Yeah, absolutely, he's like the heavyweight Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, he's a masterful boxer, masterful. Um, he's probably a favourite to beat Wilder, but if he gets caught, he'll go on in like the rest of them. I, I, I am very scared because, you know, my thing is this. If that court gets open... Um, yeah, that's that's you know, the worry, in it, the court. Because, yeah, the last opponent, um, he was able to fight... Um, so many rounds and it was easy for him but jo um, sorry Deontay Wilder if that cut opens he's no um, old opponent you know this is a good opponent that will knock you out and it was proven in the last fight <coughs> how do you see that fight going? Uh, well my friend Mick Whale and his, and his son Josh they think that Tyson just takes him to school and stays out at way and and I, I see him 
probably probably doing that, you know, he's seen he's gonna knock him out and that, but always think the opposite of what he says. So if he says he's gonna knock him out, he's gonna fumble his way and mess about and at the end of every round he'll put his hands up to you know to get into judge's head because it's all kidology in it his style is basically kid kidology it's built around what peter designed for him right when peter started training him he'd been knocked down what four times so he's decided to protect his chin right he's got a great heart but he gets clipped and he goes down but he gets up so he's designed a style that's very defensive based on feints. That's what Peter designed for him. Now he was never dropped with Peter in the corner. Yeah, he was dropped by Cunningham, but Peter weren't in the corner that day with uh, Clifton Mitchell. So I think he'll just use his attributes, which is reach, his feints, stay out of the way, pick and poke, and go, go his way to a points victory. But... If he gets caught, he'll go on it. He'll... That's the thing. Everybody thinks that, that it's either a, a Deontay knockout or a Fury decision. Point. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree that Peter Fury should be the trainer. Um, it was sad to see him yeah. di uh, throw Peter away like yeah. that because yeah. of what they achieved together. Um, yeah, it was. Then he went with Ben, ben Davison. You know, Ben Davison is not that good of a trainer because you know my thing is this: he just didn't do what Peter did, and now he's with another trainer. Well, what do you think about that? Because my thing is this: if the telly's don't bro uh, if the telly's not broke, don't fix it. And the mm -hmm. telly wasn't broke when Peter was in the corner, but you know, some reason he tried to fix it. What do you think? Uh, well, I know Peter obviously very well, and I've done done training camps with Peter, and and I think that. Peter and him were great, weren't they? Obviously, the, I'm not going to go into why they've gone the separate ways, but I don't agree with what happened because I believe in loyalty. Like Cliff, Clinton Woods would stay with Dennis from turning pro to world titles and retired. He ended up a millionaire, and, and, and I think that's a great story. And I think if he'd have stopped with Peter and Mick and they could have seen it through, I thought it was like a fairy tale. I thought it really was, but... He's gone with that Ben, fair enough. He got dropped twice with that Ben, and then his last fight, if it had been a different referee, they could have stopped him on that cut, couldn't they? I never heard Ben, uh, ben sorry, say in the corner, Tyson stopped uh, showboating. You know, I never heard him say that. No, I said if. No, you know, I think you mis misunderstood what I said. He got dropped twice by Wilder, and then he fought uh, Swartz and then Wallin. He got cut against Wallin, didn't he, right? That cut, he could have been stopped on that. I didn't say show what I said. He could have been stopped on the cut with a different referee. Well, that's it. You know, it could have screwed him, you know. Yeah. God, it didn't screw him. But after that happened, and then his dad's outburst on telly, the writing were on the wall. Because people would have been on and on and on at him. Why risk it? Why risk it? You know, you, you're in there with your world's biggest puncher, biggest puncher in the sport ever, any Wilder. Why risk it and blah de blah and all that? So I personally think that he's thought, you know what, I'll get a new trainer. But I think he should have gone back to Peter, but he hadn't, he's gone to that uh, Sugar Hill. I mean, people keep saying, oh, he's Manuel Stewart's nephew and that. What does that mean? That don't mean anything, does it? He's not Emmanuel Stewart, is he? Yeah, but I, I've spoke to Peter once or twice. I didn't want to get too much into it because, you know, in case personal. Um, do you understand why he threw Peter away? Was it just a disagreement or he wanted to change things or what was it? No, I, I'm not going to comment on that. It's not to do with me. So, because but... another um, is Billy Joe. He's been doing the same thing. Um, changing trainers like that you know i don't understand be loyalty oh do you mean ben davidson why you left ben or why you left peter uh, i'm not i'm not, i don't really want to comment on why he left peter but I, and i don't know why he left ben davidson so but this is how i look at it he got dropped twice by wilder didn't he he looked awful against Sarah for Sarifi, awful against Pianetta. He got dropped twice by Wilder. And he stopped that Swartz, didn't he? And then Walling get caught him. And, you know, it were a life and death, I felt. Now, I don't think that's the mark of a... I don't think he's the Tyson of 2015. That's what I think. But, but he's got this big 
PR machine around him now and I think that he's smart enough I think he's smart enough to know 